You know, uh, I don't know how I feel about Cruz Desern going forward. But one thing I'm going to say is that um, the performance I've seen from Savannah Marshall tonight doesn't have me thinking that she can beat Clarissa Shields in a rematch. Now, for those who remember, I had Savannah Marshall beating Clarissa Shields. I'm talking about going into the first fight. Well, they're, they're, if they would have if they would have fight again, it would be their first fight. Um, I was like, yo, Savannah Marshall, she's the female Tyson Fury. You know, she's good. She's got the power. She can move. She can jab. She can do everything. Clarissa Shields cleanly beat her, and some may say dominated. But in this case right here, um, I'm not sure that the Savannah Marshall I've seen tonight can beat Clarissa Shields in a rematch. I'm not sure. I'm T Street Controversy with Fight View 360. Um, I have it seven rounds to three for French Sean Cruz de Zern. It was an ugly fight, a lot of hugging getting intimate at one point in time um i think it was the last round or round number nine ten round fight two minute rounds she was leaning on a second rope and savannah marshall back is against the rope and french Cruz cruz dessert is just all in her crotch like basically she was tired you know and it was a lot of um um like her lunging and then when it don't connect she's getting caught and then she'll just like grab you and by the way as you can see Getting a head butt from um, Franchon Cruz de Zern looks like it would hurt. And she was, like, coming in a lot with that head. As you can see, a little bit of the clip right there. But I've seen better performances from her. You know, this was undisputed at 168, by the way. I've seen better performances from her. So going into, you know, enemy territory over into the U.K., where basically she's our own promoter for this event. Um, foreign land, foreign judges, you know, she had to do something spectacular to get a win. Let's listen to the cards. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe. That's our natural division, 168. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 full championship rounds, we go to the judge's scorecard for the official decision. Judge Paul Wallace sees the bout 95 to 95. <laughs> judge Sean Lona sees it 99 to 92, while Judge Marcus McDonald sees the contest 97 to 93. Declaring your winner by majority decision. And the new undisputed super middleweight champion of the world, Sarah, the silent assassin, Marshall. That 95-95 was scary. That 95-95 was scary, wasn't it? Damn. I was thinking like, oh, shit. Shenanigans. Shenanigans are on the way. Hold on, let me see what's going on with Big J. She got all her belts, finally. And she beat a real champion, you know, a former champion. Like, she didn't beat just, uh, um, you know. But you know what I hate is, like, when vacant belts be on the line for undisputed. Like, that kind of – wasn't there some vacant belts on the line? Let me check. I don't want to be wrong here. No, 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 they wasn't. She took them – she beat um, Cel de Roos, um, um, Cruz de Zern, as you can see here. So, yeah, she took the belts from the champion. You know, that's impressive. But, yeah, she just didn't do enough. You know, um, she looked at winded, tired, meaning uh, Cruz de Zern. Uh, she just didn't do enough. So now it's going to be next for Savannah Marshall. You know, um, is so Clarissa Shields going to come up to take her belts at 168? 
<clears throat> I'm not saying I'm not I'm, I'm not going to count her fully out against Savannah. I mean against uh, Professor Shields in a rematch, but I'm saying I'm not going to be able to pick. Like, oh, is that Mickey Hennessy? Where you come from? They go Huey back there. Where's he been? Where's he been at? April back there too. They go uh, Cruz Desern. Cool chick, though. She sold the fight. You know, that's why when she was talking all the shit she was talking, I'm like, yo, I know she's just selling the fight. So let's see if um, what happens with her and Savannah Marshall. Um, I mean, Clarissa Shields. If Clarissa Shields gets into the ring, if they already have something planned. Let's see in the post-fight interview if she's going to call out Clarissa Shields. She's taking all her pictures now. But overall, nice little solid card. You know who I'm not impressed with? Um... Benjamin Whitaker. I've said that the last fight, I don't see him as being a special fighter. I know it's still early. He's just 4 0 after the day, but it's still early. Listen to the post fight interview. Hold on. Great dreams. It's um, well, I can't describe how I'm feeling at the minute. I just want to thank everyone who's come out, everyone who's bought a ticket. Because seriously, if you didn't buy tickets, I wouldn't be in this position. You prepared for a physical and brutal fight. Was it as hard as you expected it would be? Oh, even I, I think I broke my hand on her head. Um, tough, tough woman. And um, everything I set up in the build up, I'll take back. I think uh, from ringside, certainly, we thought it was a close fight. The cards reflected that. Were you and Peter Fury confident as the fight was going on that you were ahead? Um, to be honest, I thought she'd come on stronger. Uh, some of the rounds were close, but I felt like I was catching her with a pair of shots. Do you think ultimately that's what made the difference? I don't think so, yeah. What do you want to do now? So, I mean, as is this moment, all eyes turn to the future. It was set up before this that a win should set up a rematch with Carissa Shields. Is that now your number one priority? Yeah, if it's there and she wants it, I'll give it. Um, but also, I know my coming champion is mandatory. There's also another woman in America called Shadisa Green who's waiting in land for her shot. So, I'll have to see what McKenna C wants me to do and Pia. Yeah, you feel it's one of those two options. If it was uh, Clarissa Shields, which weight would it be at in your preference? I mean, it's probably on her terms, but at what weight? I'm sure she'll want to try and uh, unify another division. Um, I don't think I'll make middle. It's a bit of a tight squeeze now, but look, she can come and have a shot at uh, super middle. Let's, uh, I was going to say let's speak to Franchon, but she's gone, so I'd like to bring in promoter Ben Shalom who can perhaps shed some light on the future so first off two-part question how proud are you talk about I think they should do undisputed undisputed um Savannah goes down to 160 and they both fight at 160 then all eight of the titles likely two ring magazine will be on the line um 10 titles in all that's crazy she's deserved it she's put in everything and uh, delighted to her what's next I think we know what that's next so you know I think she had commitments to Shadesha Green but the message is, it's Clarissa Shields, all roads lead to Clarissa Shields. And to you, same question, at what weight? I think it has to be at super middleweight. That's where, that's where Savannah is the, is the best fighter in the world, we believe. And uh, that's where the rematch has to happen. Just in terms of selling tickets, and I think we all felt that some seeds were planted back in October on that magical night to see this arena with 8,000 in again. And I think Savannah selling close to 1,000 tickets. Some of those, I'm sure, were people that were coming back after the first fight with Clarissa Shields must make everybody in this team immensely proud. It's incredible. The support Savannah has, I've never seen anything like it. She's done the O2, she's now done the Manchester Arena. It's incredible and she deserves it and it shows what a people's champion she really is. Let's go turn you around. I'm going to give you the final word because we are going to go down to the quote. Clarissa Shields, have you got a message direct to her? Thanks for coming over. We can get on the super middle. Okay, there you go. Back to you guys. I want to hear what they see to Clarissa Shields. Oh, man. We don't have the sound feed over here in the States. We don't have the sky. Um, Clarissa Shields is doing an interview with Sky Sports, but we don't have the sound uh, uh, feed here. Let me see. That's trash. We don't have the feed from our interview. So as I was saying, it makes sense for them to fight at uh, uh, 160. Then it'll be more history behind the fight. Another a double undisputed fight. Of course, Canelo um, and Charlo, me and Big J are going to be talking about that soon. Um, 
hold on let me message him now we're gonna wrap up this video But yeah, um, I'm not confident that um, this Savannah Marshall I seen last night would beat Clarissa Shields in the rematch. Um, what mandatory obligations does she have? She's talking about Shadeja Green. I would entertain Savannah Marshall versus um, Shadeja Green, and then the winner fights um, Clarissa Shields. But they didn't have Clarissa Shields over there for no reason. So something must be cooking with that rematch. And frankly, in boxing, there's only but so many ways Clarissa Shields can go because, as you can see, fighters like Natasha Jonas don't really want to fight her. And a fight like Terry Harper, you know, she's too small, even though she's competing at 154, you know, and um, um, 154 is kind of pushing it for Clarissa Shields. She said it herself, 160 is like where she, where she wants to be. 168 was where she won her first title. So basically, um, um, that's the way to go. But I, what I was saying about Ben Whitaker is not a fan. Uh, Natasha Jonas also was uh, on the card. She beat um, a Candy Wyatt. Um, to win the vacant IBF title at 147. Sandy Ryan, who's supposed to be fighting Jessica McCaskill for the other three belts, the WBO, WBC, and WBA, that's going to be on the zone. Natasha Jonas is over here in the boxer, and basically between 140 and 154, there's political issues all around for her. You know, because most of the main boxers are over on, in those divisions are over on the zone with Eddie Hearn. And it seems as though Natasha Jonas' split with Eddie Hearn um, was kind of rough. 